What up? It's Jimmy. This is a clip from our big NCAA basketball show starring Maxwell Smart. Hit the link. Check out our show. We get to the final game of Max's card. And so many of these teams, I get so excited to hear your breakdowns and I'm you know, following them through your breakdowns. And New Mexico Lobos have had such an interesting year and with all the all the difficulties that COVID and the pandemic has brought to sports, it seems like very few teams have been affected to the degree that New Mexico Lobos have. And some of these teams thrive under the difficulties and some buckle under them. And New Mexico Lobos sure seem like they are thriving, but they've been playing cupcakes and Boise State Broncos are not a cupcake. New Mexico Lobos 3-0 in their first Mountain West game of the year at Boise State 4-1. We're at Extra Mile Arena in Boise, Idaho. We don't have a – let me get some lines here. A line there. See if I can get one here for us. This game is at 9 p.m. And there we go. We have Boise State 11.5 point favorites at minus 106. This is at FanDuel with a total of 144.5. Talk about the Lobos first. They had to leave their county due to the very strict COVID restrictions. And they've handled adversity beautifully. They finally got to play a game on December 13th. They've been living out of a hotel. Uh, they're in two different communities in Texas that have enormously high COVID rates. But at least they're allowed. They're not restricted. And they can practice together. Uh, they look good. They won at Rice 72-61. Uh, they only had one starter returning. I'll get to that in a second. But we were, it was very interesting see how they would play. They followed it up by destroying NAIA Our Lady of the Lake 104-65, then doing the same to Div 3 Latorno Yellow Jackets 90-58. These back-to-back -back games at Boise State will give us a good indication of how good they are. They're led by their only returning starter senior, Makawach Maluach, who's averaging 18.3 points, 10 rebounds a game. Now let's go to Boise. After opening their season with a 68-58 loss to a very good Houston team at Houston, Boise State's rattled off four straight wins. They defeated Sam Houston State 86-55, beat NAIA College of Idaho Yotes 86-49, then won 74-70 at BYU as three-and-a-half-point underdogs before beating Weaver State 70-59. They shoot just 42.8% from the field. But their defense is strong. They allowed just 60.2 points per game, led by 6'9 combo guard forward Derek Alston Jr., who's scoring 15.2 points per game. Can't wait to hear your take on this game. This is Max's last game on his card, 9 p.m. Eastern. New Mexico Lobos, Boise State Broncos. Yeah, with this Boise State Bronco team, there are a lot of high expectations, Jim. But it's going to be reliant on having the full contingency of the roster available on a game-to-game -game basis, especially in the Mountain West, especially at home, and especially in a back-to-back -back situation, which is going to be unfamiliar to many programs. Um, with this Boise State team, they definitely have a lot of offensive weapons. And um, they went to Canada, and they got Abu Kebab. Um, he's definitely a talented player. He's come in, give you a lot of good minutes, gives you double-digit production, hits a lot of threes, has to work on his free-throw shooting, but he's a very gifted driver. He's got really good size. I think that him and if Marcus Shaver uh, is rejoining the lineup because he has been missing the last two games, that gives you the necessary firepower that you need to step up and in and really um, – take away New Mexico's advantage, which is their amount of size and their advantage rebounding offensively and defensively. Um, the biggest surprise so far since the uh, injury to Shaver has been Ray J. Dennis. Ray J. Dennis obviously has been with the program, sees a bunch of guys step in front of him, and you know what? He stepped up and in. He's done a great job of getting to the rim, getting high percentage looks, and uh, maximizing his shot attempts at the rim. I think that this is a team that has less size than they need to going up against this New Mexico, uh, New Mexico team.
When you look at New Mexico, what can they do? They can get on the offensive glass and they can beat you down. They got size at every position. You're not going to be stronger and bigger than them. And that's where they're going to give you trouble. Uh, with New Mexico, this is a different team than Boise State played last year. And I think that that's what's going to be um, a little bit of an adjustment early on. This is a Boise State team that, like you said, has been playing very good defense and only allowing 26 points in first halves with 26% three-point defense. Um, obviously, they got to clean up their work at the free throw line where they are only hitting 68%, but they are one of those volume free throw shooting teams. Um, they got to win the turnover battle against New Mexico. They got to be able to move the ball and not be um, not be in trouble by New Mexico's length. I think that when you look at New Mexico, even though they beat two D D two or non D one uh, competitors, I think that that game against Rice was a really good indicator of how they're going to play. Um, they're going to play forty minutes. They're going to lock down with the zone. Their defense is going to get them into their transition. Um, I think that with the game against Rice, they made their free throws, which is key. They got to limit those turnovers and keep them under 15. And um, they got to either abandon the three point shot or start shooting it better. I think that when you look at three point shooters, you're probably going to re rely on Emmanuel Kowak and probably Jeremiah Francis, uh, the North Carolina transfer. But there's nothing in the guard in the backcourt that really impresses me aside from Saquon Singleton, who's averaging eight and seven, obviously, versus um, a different level of co competition. But what doesn't change is they got a bunch of guys that can get on the glass. They got a bunch of guys that have a ton of length. And if they want to slow this game and muck this game up and just throw it into the low block every time to um, a multitude of different guys. Um, New Mexico could end up winning this game outright. Um, I think that free throw shooting is the one area of concern that you worry about, but if they're trying to stay within the game and they're trying to stay within double digits, uh, free throw shooting will be on Boise State. It won't be on them. Uh, it would just be a matter of can they make a three to decrease the um, scoring margin. I think that New Mexico comes out and really surprises Boise State. Um, and I think it could be a real low scoring first half, but for show purposes, I'm just going to take New Mexico as a double digit dog. You're getting plus 11 and a half. Bet 365 has moved it to 11, but circa yeah. gives you plus 11 and a half and minus 110. How's that sound? Yeah, I'm I'm not surprised. Um, I bet this, this is one of the first games that I bet. Um, I was actually going to go the other way. Um, and then I was influenced by a set of numbers and um, a human being. So I think that this New Mexico game is definitely going to be around nine and a half, maybe even nine by game time. But we'll see what happens tomorrow. I love it. New Mexico Lobos uh, plus 11 and a half. 